Hello, hello. Welcome to Bubble Tea Time, aka the Lost Ark waiting room. Um, I'm your host, Riot, uh, Brian Riot Hecatonu, <laughs> joined by Dan, our analyst, here every weekend because he has nothing else to do. Oh, Monday. Hey, oh, it's worse. Monday. Uh, even worse, honestly. Uh, Coco the Dragon. Hello, Coco. Our Yo. friendly neighborhood cam operator now. <laughs> kind of lit. And then Chase Pentamaster Hunt. Hello, hello. hello Chase Hunt Pentamaster. <laughs> How many Pentas have you actually gotten in your league? Uh, I think there's one more person that we have to introduce. Uh, um, okay, understandable. <laughs> understandable. <laughs> A master doesn't divulge his secrets, honestly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, and then finally, Nathan Tactical Gazelle. How are you doing? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Um, your picture... Yeah, honestly, it's it's an interesting one, but I think it really, really well represents your gameplay. So it I'm does. happy to have you on the show with that picture. Thanks. Right. The most deadly support known to man. Yes, sir. Um, let's crack into it. Speaking of support, we have a lot of supports on this call, don't we? So we can have a we can really have a, a support powwow today. We we definitely need it. I'm sure. All right, let's go into it. Match recap. Don't have a graphic this week because you don't need it. We're just going to go through match by match. Let's talk about EXO versus Deep Dive. Do we have a clip for this? Do we have a clip for all these, Elena? Yes, right, we yeah. do. All right, let's do it. Let's hit it. EXO versus Deep Dive clip. Uh, give me give me a heads up. Do we have any D EXO Deep Divers? No, no, no. Okay, Dan, give me a heads up. What's going on? Um, well, we saw the BTL's first Janna Smite top lane, and honestly, it was just um, pretty well played throughout the map with uh. XO and just willing to prove uh, all the analysts wrong in the prediction. Yeah, it's uh, tough. Yeah, it's real tough. Real quick. Well, like, the, the problem is just Glenn has been spamming this Janna Karma top lanes and solo queue for the entire week, sort of preparing himself mentally for this. And at that stage, he just needs to be able to relay to his team how that kind of runs. So, and then we saw it in the LCS, and you can see how, like, oppressive it is. But the biggest problem for me was just Deep Dive didn't respect the changes at all, and they had an answer for it. Like, you had Trinomir to just go and beat the crap out of a side lane and then become this OP barbarian to just win the game. But they constantly kept getting pushed and overextended and then getting killed, and in, that was specifically in the bottom lane. And then Trinomir never actually was on a side lane properly with vision set up. To, to punish the fact that Glenn and the rest of XO would just want to team fight. Uh, uh, no. I do also want to say that, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I've only played against Smite Janna top one time. That's pretty much it. I really never run into it. Um, even yeah. though it is kind of strong. So, like, adapting to that on the fly, it, well, even if you know it's coming, it's, it's like, kind of hard to practice against it and super mm. prepare for it. Um, I because, I mean, I mean, no one really runs it that much at least yeah and even though uh defy inside was playing jungle it felt like uh, i talked to him after the game and he's like yeah it, the great part was that i basically had a jungler roaming with me telling me where i needed to go and macroing me with my effective timings and i was like that sounds nice <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's the start of a new era for vtl for the next week or two potentially because I mean, we've seen in L LCS, we've seen like Jonas Smite top, Karma Smite top. We've already seen things like, you know, the the LS, I guess, Church of LS comps, like with Ivern mid and Soraka mid and stuff like that. Is this something that you think will bleed over into BTL outside of just like this one game? Do you think, you know, like let's say this next coming week, do you think a team is going to whip out the Ivern mid or something or a bunch of enchanters, that kind of stuff? I know a lot of people in yes. BTL are pretty inclined to play those kind of champions, to be honest. Uh -huh. Yeah, I BTL think it's definitely has possible. So many support mains, it's just a game. True. We have a flooding of support mains, and now it's their time to shine in other roles. Oh no. I wish I could say I'm excited for it, but I'm not. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. Our next match uh, PO versus AR. Another upset. We have a lot of upsets this week, so let's talk about PO versus AR. Uh, speaking of PO Chase, give me a heads up. Uh, well, first, I guess, let, uh, while we load up the clip, how'd you feel about this match going in? I mean, you guys were considered the underdog. The predictions were very heavily against you, but you turned the tide, so... What yeah. Were really um, I mean, I knew going into it, it was going to be a really hard match 
Uh, there's no pretty much no way around it. I mean, they're the top ranking team for a reason. Super stu, super stability across the board, so really hard to punish them. Um, but it kind of just I don't know fell in our favor, I guess. Um, most of the team fights worked out just for us, and then um, we were able to just get objectives and st- uh, roll the game after that. All right, speaking of rolling the game, let's roll the clip. And, you said uh, it. You said the thing. <laughs> Hit the button. You can uh, check out this super play from the PO squad. A team effort for sure. Yeah. Starts off with the hook, but the turnaround Nautilus all into Chase. This Oriana. Oh, yeah. Me yeah. Oh, this is... oh. Kind of just unfortunate that they all grouped just enough to get into the Oriana ult, and then Oriana ult just shredded all of them. Uh, pulled them all together, and then that was pretty much the end of that fight. Um, the Thresh hooking me there was, uh, I don't know, I was like, well, now I can just ult your backline, so I wasn't entirely sure about that, but, um, I was just really, after, I mean, after I ulted, I was getting chunked really, really hard, so I was like, ah, uh, maybe, maybe this isn't gonna work out as, as well as I had hoped, but, um, we got the five-man Ori- Oriana ult, so the team fight just worked for us. Nice, Babe. nice. End of the fight, but also I think a lot of viewers probably saw that as the end of the game because it was a it was a pretty big statement in that game right there. If you ever say, mm-hmm. right. yeah, do you think let's say for for the floor, do you think how how is AR going to respond to a loss like this? They were three and zero before this. Now they're down to three and one against a team that you know they had heavily been favored to win. Um, I'd have to say this actually is more of a lesson that not just includes AR, but includes a lot of like the top teams that had uh, had upsets this this week. That like goes for also deep dive and um, also good boys as well. That had an upset is that you need to start learning how to close mid game and getting to late game closures because fighting over these objectives is really leveling the playing field and allowing these lower teams to get into a position where they can get a good team fight proper set up and be able to get back into the game. And as great as that is for these lower teams, it's just AR and the rest of the top tiers need to figure out, all right, let's drop the ball. They beat us to the punch with this objective setup. Let's go find gold somewhere else and keep our lead going. Nathan, as a former member of AR, do you think they're still top team after this one? Or do you think, you know... This will will this hurt their mental? Does this mean that you know maybe the first couple of weeks were against like easier opponents or something like that, or do you think they're just going to keep on sailing after this and just going to shrug this one off? Well, there's always like you know bumps in the road. I don't think it's going to really severely hurt their mental. If anything, it's probably good to kind of get some losses out of the way so you can really focus in on what you got to practice. Uh, so They'll I get the perfect they, game. Yeah, I think they could definitely do better. Yeah, I mean. We used to say in seasons past, hey, at least they didn't lose to EXO. However, you can't really say that anymore. <laughs> They're a 2-2 two two team, and I think the curse is, is very clearly broken. So Curse is lifted. Yeah. So, perfect. I think AR will be just fine, and PO looking up. Speaking of upsets and GB, let's talk about THD versus GB, um, our final upset of the week. I don't think the other two necessarily were considered upsets, but... Um, yeah, this was a pretty pretty interesting game, too, that also went pretty deep. So, Nathan, considering you are on THD, give me the clip. Give me, give me, give me your takes on this clip and then the game itself. Uh, Thoughts, Nathan? Yeah, so... Yeah, it's a very, the game it's a very itself... exciting clip right now. Oh, there you are. Hi. The god hand. <laughs> the god hand pulls the jungler yeah, out. That pool was pretty hype because uh, I basically got to pick wherever I wanted. Like they were all kind of kind of spread, so I ended up like being able to get their jungler, which was like the ideal target. And then Charlie was able to really secure the Baron instead of making it fifty fifty. It was just like guaranteed. Um, so you know, at that point, we're like just happy with the fight overall. Like they're even if we lost the fight, we got Baron, so you know we kind of claw 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 win. Uh, but we actually won the team fight in the end too, so it was just you know icing on the cake, I guess. Um, the game in general is a pretty good one. Uh, I think we did pretty decent early. Like our carries actually had the kills, even if we were kind of overall behind. So like money was on the right characters, but the mid game was really hard for us. Their team, their team fighting and like coordination, kind of like presence on the map, really kind of 
threw us for a loop a lot of the time. Um, and it wasn't until kind of like Kale got online, like, you know, got, got 16 and we sort of started calming down and trying to make, make tempo plays that we really kind of got back into the game, but it was a, it was a crazy game. Definitely a, definitely a fun one to watch. Nice. So I guess opening it up to everybody else of the three upsets, um, this week, you know, or at least according to the analysts that voted last week, which is the, which is the most shocking upset to you? Hmm. I think the EXO deep dive, uh, I think it was like they had a countermeasures, like you could see it in the uh, comp by drafting the Trendomir and, and it just did not play out how I expected it to. Um, yeah, I, I can kind of, I can partially agree with Dan's the fact of just how the game went as well, that it was almost entirely EXO's control to win or lose that game. So that's the adamant like biggest upset for sure but i think like the most surprising one yeah just catching me all off guard was probably the thd gb one because it was like so to the last second that finally everything kicks in you get the bright scaling with the kale and then just boom game's over so that was one that i think is the funnest one to watch but it was definitely xo dd that uh was the most surprising so far for this week yeah i think I mean, pretty much gonna agree with both Dan's and Coco. The EXO deep dive, like pretty much how Coco said and how the game went, really surprising. Uh, but the THD GB one, like with the gold difference and then the team comps and how they're supposed to be played out with uh, THD on uh, KO, so they need to scale and then they're just behind. Them coming back was kind of insane. Um, you know, a couple really good team fights and then put Kel on the map again and then. You know, Kale six, Kale level sixteen, pretty much just wins the game. So it was a uh, pretty crazy to watch. Nice Church of LS scaling, right? Something, something. It's the effect. It's in the water here in North America now. So <laughs> we didn't have any enchanters. Next time you'll you'll see you'll see some more enchanters. Mayo has been dying to play some Soraka top and stuff like that. So <laughs> shout yeah. out to All right, I'm... let's move on to our fourth match of the week: TSC versus SB. Er, no, no, B gang. Sorry, TSC versus B gang gang. Um, I actually didn't watch this match, but I heard it was a banger. And I, when I tuned in midway through, I saw Beging had a really nice lead. Um, and then I tuned in like 10 minutes later. I'm like, ooh, game's over. That's awkward. So give me the clip. And, and anybody here, none, none of us are TSC Beggangers, right? All right. Coco, give me, give me a heads up on what happens in this clip and what happened in this game for someone who knows nothing like me. Oh, yes. For for us who have no thoughts and only head empty, which was pretty much me through this entire game. I was just exhausted after work. But it, it was a very well-played early game macro performance from specifically Caribou on this Elise, just like popping off already like six and three in the clip as it is. They had just grabbed the dragon. And this was that big turning point where B-Gang just did not get out in time to reset and re-attack the map. And it gave student council this triple kill onto Plob's Corky. And that from there was the ending of days because that's where it's like boom three shutdowns over to the corky corky gets to cash in on these massive items he already had ravenous hydra and Luna's, uh tempest at that point so he was already pumping out a massive amount of damage and that fight and sort of how the scramble played out just it, it didn't tilt b gang but it left them saying like all right well our our battle plan is now messed up for the next five minutes how do we come back at this and with a composition that was already built up to be early game successful and then having to play a longer game because of those catches that club was able to get on the corky it, it was just a demise for them and i, I think uh angela and, uh excuse me um chase and Anne marie said it best with that B gang never went heel cut and they just had to buy the heel cut um, because that was what they needed to do to survive against the uh, rest of TSC and sort of help them get through that mid game uh, drought that they were struggling from that dragon throw. Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought <clears throat> this, that this would be a pretty close game. So I'm happy that it uh, went down to the wire, but TSC now sitting pretty at three and one um, feels good for them. B gang at one and three, but Still some life yet, and still pretty early in the season. Uh, yeah. Barely halfway through. Um, finally, MBB versus SB ended up in a SB victory. Let's roll a clip. Uh, as a member of SB, Dan's, what's going on? Well, this is me trying to clear words, and Sam 
decides to step up and push his luck, and I scramble flash over just to keep my AD carry safe. Um, a lot of this game honestly felt um, very team oriented. We were mostly macro. It was a very low kill game, and overall, um, you notice that our team is uh, very spread out in terms of our kill participation. Uh, and I think that just speaks that we try to make plays um, at different points in the game, different sides of the map, not necessarily with everybody there, but we're trying to do more macro approach to the game. Gotcha, yeah. Clean game. And uh, yeah, pretty pretty clean couple of weeks for SP so far. Um, I guess it's only going up for you guys. So, uh in addition, or linked to that game and the game before, we saw two Zeri picks, uh, one on the MBB side and one on the B gang side. Both Zeri picks actually lost. How do you guys feel about Zeri's performance so far in BTL? Do you think it was just like the wrong situations? Um, you know, maybe like the other team just outscaled them, or like how how do you think BTL um, will view Zeri going into the future after her O two weekend? O two. Mm, I mean. The champion is still really strong, right? So I think that it's not really going to affect any any way on how people were considering playing her before, um, especially with, like, Janna or Karma or something like that. It's just, like, a really, really strong uh, lane when you shield Zeri and she just teleports all over the map. Um, and then, I don't know. If you have someone that's, like, a mechanical god, then Zeri's kind of insane on that person because the APM on, <laughs> that you can get on that champion... <laughs> So, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think it'll affect any, or I don't think it'll, we'll see. I don't think it'll affect, uh, like, Zeri picks in the future, to be honest. Yeah, and I think it's just going to get picked more. I, I think the two teams that did pick it up this first week were the ones that were needing that OP ADC pickup to get themselves through the through the week. And they they used it as a risk. And it's like, all right, we know it's busted. We may not have time or practice on it, but we're going to see how it works and see how confident we can be with getting uh, this pick off the ground um, and giving us a little bit of a, a lead or a favor. Um, but w with that being said, would she's still an extremely strong champion. And this one week showing how well you can sort of attack it in the bottom lane might actually make it to where, all right, now we know what's good against her, how she struggles, and what we can do to improve and prepare ourselves to have a Zeri favored draft when they go into next week. So I, I feel like the chances are only increasing uh, to see the new champion in the Bubble T League. Nice, nice. Do you think Zeri, I mean, we saw her in the ADC slot um, two out of two times here, but you know we've seen her played in a variety of roles. Uh, in pro play and you know worldwide in general and solo queues. So, do you think the AC slots actually are best slot, or do you think um, you know people will use it as a flex and center top, center mid, all that kind of stuff? I, I personally think mid is her best spot, just because of her dash that goes over walls. You're able to make moves on the map a lot more quickly than the enemy mid laner. Um, so it, it lets you just respond to situations. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Fancy. All right, now that we're done with match recaps, thank you boys for going through the week. Let's move on to our favorite segment, dance stats. Speaking oh yeah. Devil, the man himself here, run us through the Nick Mead versus Dan Lee for three. Well, honestly, these are some of the like hype eighty carries right now in the league. Nick Mead, uh, probably I want to say highest KDA. Um. And Dan Lee for three, probably highest DPM, if I recall correctly. Um, and you can see how the more team-oriented stats of DPM vision per minute um, favor Dan Lee, but Nick Mead just doesn't die. Like, when ahead, Nick Mead is pretty much untouchable, um, which... It's surprising given his vision score. So, Chase, as his support, can you explain this man's Dude, lack of death? I don't know what you want me to say here, okay? I <laughs> Clearly, I know a lot about control wards, okay? I mean, I I, I buy so many of them. I, but, uh, and I try to tell everybody to buy control wards, but I don't know. I don't know. Just uh, not you're... buying control wards and not putting his wards down. 
but, but I don't know what else to do. <laughs> I, I, mean, I would how... like to point out that Dan said that the team stats favored Dan Lee for three. However, I'm just saying kill participation is a pretty interesting stat that requires a that, team. And Nick Mead's got to That is the difference because Panting Puma, sleeper top laner, has gotten a couple solo bolos. Ooh. Um, and Peel tends to play more towards their bot side. Um, and so a lot of the key, t- uh, kills center around either uh, Chase or Nick Mead um, being played around. Case in particular being mostly the engaged. All right, all right. Pivotal matchup. Two of the shining stars in the ADC role. Pretty excited to see how it pan out. Speaking of how it pan out, we'll talk about that in just a second. Let's go to predictions. We've got a whole slate of them, like we always do. First off, let's just get it top to bottom. TSC versus EXO. Looks like it's going to be a three to four split in favor of EXO. This is this is something new. Um, compared to like, you know, last season, the season before, let's just not talk about that anymore. Um, because this is a new XO and a new face of the brand. And wow, they just saved us from actually deleting the franchise. Um, because that's probably what was going to happen if they have it again. So, um, thank God, but they're back with a vengeance and it looks like most of us favor them now. So give me a heads up. Let's, let's talk to a, you know, usually I talk to like the one voter that picks the other team, but let's talk to an XO voter right now. What really pushes them over the edge? Coco, give me, give me, give me the heads up. What pushes them over the edge now? Man, for right now, I, I think it's the fact that EXO might be feeling a hot streak right now, and they're getting their emotions running. They're feeling confident. They got their stride back in, and going up against TSC is the one where it's it's the it's one of the titans of the league right now. Where TSC did a phenomenal job in their own rights throughout this week, but. You know, they're looking a little weak, and being one of the weaker uh, leaders of the Bubble Tea League, I think EXO has the drive, they've got the power, you know, just like uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson said, we stay hungry, we devour, and they're going to be able to just go ahead and pop the hell off against TSC. All right, I mean, TSC at 3-1 and one is going to take offense to that statement. Uh, they're already <laughs> taking offense in chat. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what do you think TSC can do? Did any of you guys vote TSC? I just missed the prediction tab. You did, and Chase. Oh, and wait. Uh, I'm not Chase. Nathan, did too, my boy. Nathan, why TSC? Why is it a TSC dip? Uh, I think they're pretty comfortable on, like, their roles as characters, like, what they need to do in the team. I think the last game, like, even though they got pretty demolished early game, like, their mental was, like, insanely strong, apparently, so they just fought it out, scaled, and eventually won the game. I think they'll probably just do that into most teams pretty Easy. I think it will be a tough game, though. Uh, it'll be a good one to watch for sure. But I'm going to ask the real question. They seem now. pretty strong. I'm going to ask the real questions now after you gave uh, your dissertation on why TSC is the best team in the world. Um, will Colin even play? He's played one out of four games, all right? Is he really? You always play three out of four games, I think, or something. I don't know. Is yeah. he really their top laner? Thoughts? Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, no. Poor Colin. Hopefully, he plays this one. And he can bring yeah. him to another victory, four and one, baby. I think they're undefeated <laughs> when he's in, right? They're one and zero. I think so. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Colin has the the stable one hundred percent win rate, so that's all that matters. Ooh, yeah, that's all that matters. The anti Nishant, I would say. <laughs> Sorry, Nishant. Okay, Alki is confirming that he is playing for sure uh-huh. until you know he was supposed all to right. play for sure last time, yeah, if I recall. Uh-huh. I was we'll saying, I feel like I've heard this before. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Nishant, poor guy is still looking for a win. But as we go back to the predictions, do you think they'll get it against THD? THD is me and Nathan's team. We won't really have much of a say here. And Adam's not here to defend his MVP prediction. But for everybody I mean... else that voted THD, give me reasons. Actually, just preview this game for me. Like, How do you think this game is going to go between THD and MVP? Uh... Yeah, Dan and Chase. All right, easy. Yeah, for Adam, I'm expecting that he's gonna he's leaning into the uh, diss track MBB aimed at uh, towards Brian's team, so I think that's his vote there. Um, and honestly, this could be just a surprise game. Honestly, like, uh, MBB could just be you know an animal in the corner ready to strike out, and THD might just be the victim. But I doubt it. 
Jesus. How do you think this game's gonna go? Uh, I don't really know. I mean, I don't know. Will it? Will this be the week that MVB finally takes off and all of them play out of their minds? Don't know. Maybe. Um, I don't like what Mayo's against Teddy, who's undivable. So we'll just call that a stalemate lane. <laughs> and and then I mean, uh, it's pretty much another situation of does THD mid lane take off or does MVP bot lane take off, right? Um, and then, I mean, I think the junglers will be a pretty interesting matchup. Um, but I just think THD probably takes it. Um, just MVP's just been looking pretty rough. That's pretty much the biggest thing. Uh, but, I mean, who knows? They could, I mean, they definitely have, like, the skill there to completely outplay pretty much everything, so... Who really knows, I guess. But my vote is definitely on THG for this week. I have the recipe for success for MVB. I think uh, a couple of things need to happen. Like, you know, everybody needs to get together, have some practice games. They haven't had that many in. Sure, all those things, right. Um, but honestly, the real thing is someone needs to go to Teddy's house and get on his computer and delete his Final Fantasy account and MVB ah. Fix just oh, like that. Yeah. Split, so. Just like that. Actually, you know, with Lost Ark, you probably have to delete that account and his Final Fantasy account. <laughs> um, but just give him a clean co- computer that you control. Two silver bullets the right there. <laughs> with just League of Legends. <laughs> All right, for our next prediction, we have GB versus AR. This is also not an even split necessarily, but close enough. Uh, five in favor of GB, two in favor of AR. GB just took an L last week but so did ar both of them were actually considered front runners for you know the first couple weeks so so why the votes here nobody's here to defend ar of the voters but coco give me give me the reasons why you think ar or gb i mean you voted gb so why do you think gb yeah. can take it what well, can ar do I, i'm, I'm down to play devil's advocate for ar if we want to do that because we yeah, don't so have any yeah. you, you'll be the devil's advocate there you go so i i, I think with with acid rabbits their team fighting is one of the best uh, out there at the top of the league. And with that, it's something where you can't have the Kurosaki ace diff control of just having some OP side laner when it, Acid Rabbits knows, hey, the best way we can do this is just to out team fight them and just brute force five man down mid lane, the shortest lane of the game. And as long as they do that, it's, you know, easy problem, easy solution. And it, it's also this weird sensation of losing this week is going to be another big enigma, which I'll hand this off for maybe one of the other actual, like the good boys uh, supporters on this, is which team really learned the most from their losses this week and from those upsets? And it could be as Rabbits or it could be GB from Dan's or Chase, I guess. Sure, yeah. Chase, when we talk about GB, like they seem a little coin flippy right now, you know, like they get off the ground mm-hmm. hard enough, they just snowball the game. Or they get to a point where they get a little confused in the late game, uh, start to take a fight they shouldn't, you know, go downhill. What does GB do to fix those mistakes that they hopefully learn from, like Coco mentioned, and turn it into an, another hot streak in the middle of the season? Um, Starting just, in the, <laughs> just in the game faster so they don't have to do, <laughs> deal with the late game. But I don't know. Because, like, both GB and AR have, uh, I mean, they've shown problems in late game for, like, closing games out, right? Um, I mean, both of them played almost an identical matchup or an identical game this week. They got a pretty big gold lead and then lost the team fight and then lost another team fight and then the gold was even and then lost it all objective control. And it's like, you know, w- uh, you know, which team is going to, I guess, like try to push for any of the game earlier or just like work on their macro skills um, or team fighting. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know. I just think... GB has just a little bit more like carry potential. Uh, they have Steven top lane and then Amory bot lane, and so if either one get off the off the ground, it can like provide enough space for the other one to get off the ground later in the game. So I think if the game goes late, it's probably GB favored. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they definitely got some X factors on GB. So let's see if any of those um, can really find their stride and carry games through. Um, starting against AR, which is a tough opponent, but. You know, honestly, I should have changed my vote to AR just so this would be as balanced as possible because I think this is a really close match. I'm not, I'm not really sure who will take home the, take home the dub. So, fancy, fancy. All right, let's move on to our next prediction, which is 
SB versus B gang. This is this. I thought this would be a little bit more of a sweep, honestly, because B gangs, you know, after their week one victory against MBB, they've got three losses in a row. Um, it's been a little rough. SB, on the other hand, is on a hot streak, but we have one person in here that has faith in the B gang, in the Birds B gang. Yeah. So please tell me, tell me, Nathan, why is B gang going to put SB back into the middle of the pack? All right, so I think B Gang is a bit underrated. Uh, they've lost a lot, but they're definitely experimenting like with early aggression. Like the last game, they played Elise Renekton, uh, Renekton mid, like Elise jungle, and Elise popped off early. Like it was, it looked like like a doomed game. It was solo queue. Um, I think uh, I really like that aggression. I think they're just learning to play with it and like you know, uh, you know, fight. I guess uh, probably shore up the weaknesses of like the early aggression uh like a lease but like i mean they they picked right Re- they picked rexai into it and rexai like couldn't do anything against it uh so that just shows like they're they're pretty solid on the picks but uh i don't know i think uh i think if anyone has the potential to do like an insane upset it's probably the gang uh realistically like they're gonna like throw people off uh with just the plays they make early like the first four minutes they had like three or four kills it was kind of insane nice and then you know, other than the two SB members here, who I'm sure think are right, they're just gonna sweep it and wipe them off the face of the earth. Chase, why did you vote for SB? Uh, I mean, I just think SB's been looking up more so than B Gang in a sense. Um, I don't think B Gang has found like exactly how they want to play the game comfortably. Um, they've been like experimenting with some stuff and flexing uh their roles a lot in a sense, but nothing's really like stuck for them uh so i think until they find out what really works for them and what they can like really push on to get them off the ground um it's probably sb favored gotcha yeah i mean the records and the the recent streaks would really suggest that kind of result but anything can happen any given sunday and there's so many upsets last week no reason why it can't happen again all right finally in our last prediction last but not least we have PO versus Deep Dive, which is also a lot less close vote wise than I thought it would be. Well, I, Maybe I, I should know. change my vote to make it close because I thought. It was well, I don't know why my prediction didn't get put in the in the tab. Oh, it's because I, was... I forgot what team you were on, Coco. Oh, Whoops. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Wait, I'll tell you. Says good. your second breakfast prediction. Wait, yeah, yeah. Second breakfast prediction. True. I'm like, Question not part. me. Not would me you? Best. So you voted for Deep Dive then? I voted for Deep Dive. Yes. All right. Cool. You know, honestly, I wish you could choose my position and uh, my. A prediction again so it's three to three because i think this is also a pretty close match between two teams that are sitting at two and two um that are pretty similarly built honestly yeah. like they're both bot side focused teams they both have some power in other roles like man puppet mm-hmm. matthew but you know at the end of the day if their adc is going off then they are feeling so much better about the game than if their adc is not going off so yep. what's what's the what's the deal here coco why is it a deep dive game uh well Honestly, this was the game. This was the series that I actually kind of felt was super close, fifty-fifty. Like, yes, there there are some other like fun games during the week that seem really close, like the Good Boys uh, series that we're gonna be having against Acid Rabbits. But that one feels more in the books and logged in than than this one does. I feel like this can just go hella either way, and I would not be a I would not be putting money on it if I was a betting man because of how volatile PIO can be and how deep dive can just take over games through Dan Lee and Gerg in, in the bottom side of the map. And like you said, it's it's bottom lane focused. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm sorry to say this, but the, the primary, primary reason why I'm going deep dive is because uh, Greg and Dan Lee are on it and I'm, I'm voting for my buddies in the, in the Riot squad. And it's just a little mm. bit of a work bias to see that they'll uh, <laughs> actually pick it up and uh, be able to get home. Get home I early. mean... I pointed out when we went against uh, GB, we had more rioters in our team. So just a riot diff, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you voted for PO though against your own train of logic. Give me a heads up. Yes. On why? Uh, honestly, PO's been looking pretty good on their games, even in their losses. I think uh, those losses could have easily gone either way. Uh, and I think now that PO's building back up. Uh, they have momentum coming in, and I don't think, uh, particularly Chase, I think has been playing really, really well. Uh, 
and Matthew has probably the best numbers in mid lane so far. Yeah, fool. You think that could, game could have gone either way? I was on Corky. What the heck, Dan's? Hasn't history taught you anything? Even Chase yeah. knew. Chase was like yeah. flashbacks, except from the other end from last oh, season. No. Okay, <laughs> okay. There was an unfortunate <laughs> thing where there were ban losses and Corky uh, made no. through. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's that. That does it for all of our predictions. Let's hop over to the standings tab, standings picture. Um, there's a bit of an error at the top because AR is actually three and one, but all the standings reflect it. So. Three three and one teams at the top level, a really big middle class of five two and two teams. Then at nine, Birds B Gang, and at tenth, unfortunately, the Milwaukee Bucks baby, hungry for their first win, and hopefully a lot more. So should be an exciting week. Let's see how these shake through. In a world where Asset Rabbits or SB or TSC win, maybe they'll be sitting really pretty at four and one and feeling really good about themselves going into the second half of the season. So Dude, I'm so excited cool. for the fact that we have such a fat middle class here in the Bubble Tea League. It just means okay. that we have a healthy economy and we're just nowhere but up, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Uh, like, all the teams are looking amazing. And straight up, you know what? I, I wasn't able to say it when we were doing our predictions for uh, Milwaukee Bucks versus THD, but you, you mentioned, Brian, that uh, Milwaukee Bucks may have the recipe to pull you off. And straight up, with uh, Ginny's New Kitchen after the shenanigans that happened, this oh, week, I think. Yeah, yeah, that might be it. yeah, she might Home be able to actually everything. have everything. Yeah, exactly. Home decor does wonders, honestly. So. Oh, yeah. So it might be just what they need to really get a fire going and uh, be able to burn you down this week. Yeah. I'm excited to run into two of my former championship squad teammates. So mm -hmm. see if Teddy and Mina have answers to me or if I have the answers to them. Yeah. Um, finally, after that, uh, we don't have a schedule graphic because only one game is scheduled so eh not really much of a point to it tune into the doc and to the announcements channel for that um and i think our last thing is questions from the crowd so i've got a couple questions for y'all um not too many let's see number one from captain javier list me your top three surprise players top three players that really just like gone above and beyond what you expected i mean i'm, I'm already i already know the answer to this it, you know, number one is probably Angela. Number two is probably Angela. Number three, it's like a toss up between Angela and Angela. But like SB members, <laughs> tell me, tell me why Angela is is probably in this list. It definitely in this list. To be honest. Angela trading arc. Yep, Angela trading arc. That's that's it, man. Like, well, once we get to Soraka mid lane, yeah. it's it's over, and she's just gonna be OP yeah. as all hell. So <laughs> Angela stonks right now. They're paying dividends right now. Um, but okay, other than you know, the god queen herself, Angela. What are the other two surprise players this season that really, like, popped off in, uh, in the early half and, and kind of opened your eyes, like, wow, like, you know, they're, they're pretty good. Uh, pretty I gotta give it Amperix. Amperix is the best no-win jungler in the league. Oh, like, no. he's been playing oh, so no. well, <laughs> and I'm just basically waiting on the Nishant win, and I expect it to come sooner rather than later. Oh no, poor, poor Amprix. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Chase? What are you thinking? Who's, who's your surprise uh... player of the of this season so far, half season so far? Oh man, it's kind of tough to be honest. Um, because I feel like most players that have like popped off did it like once, maybe twice, and then other games they kind of played kind of meh. But I don't know. I think wasn't it Amy on Rakan for GB? Yeah, Amy played, played really. On GB. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, she, she, I mean, she played pretty well, and she's been playing pretty decent for uh, most of the games. So I think she's kind of like looked over, <laughs> but she's been playing pretty all right for for the most part. Nice, yeah. nice. Cheer with the shout outs. What about you, Nathan? What are you thinking? A any names yeah, uh, other than Angela, the guy for herself? Yeah, she's actually been doing super well. I th I think I'd actually probably have to point out uh, Plobe, Plobe the Warrior, Plobe the Mage, or whatever he's playing. Oh, uh, I thought him uh, going from top to mid was pretty troll, but it turns out top is more of an island than it ever has been, so he, he made the right choice, I guess. But uh, he's, he's been doing really good island, on like, man. and like, game character. John Smite doesn't sit on any island I see, you know? Okay, well, yeah. that's different. <laughs> I think my other... 
probably felt it. I think he, he saw it in a dream, like what his meta was going <laughs> to be, and he's just like, no, I can't go top Perfect. anymore. I mean, I think the other person who's got me pretty hype is Glenn with his own unique style of gameplay. Uh, the tech, the new the new tech. The guy's tech. Yep. He bought it right after his death because he told me verbatim, I knew I wasn't going to die again. So, true. That's a boy. Easy money. All right. Another question from Javier once again is second. Can Chase show his hair? <laughs> your response? Not yet. Not yet. No. Nah. He's saving it's, it for we're, me. We're in week four. We're not even at playoffs yet. Yeah. So you're yeah. saying if Peel makes it to the upper bracket of playoffs, will you show the hair? Oh, possibly. There's there's a there's a chance. There's a chance. I'll just oh, leave it at same. that. All right, and then last question from Angela. What from what we've seen so far, do you think the current standings will reflect the standings at the end of the season? Do you think there's any teams that are going to rise really hard? Any teams that are going to drop like a rock? What do you guys think? Mm. I mean, the last couple of seasons, we've had some spicy tiebreakers to the point where, um, particularly last season, as a sufferer of the whims of fate, uh, we had a match that decided basically placements from like fourth through eighth uh, from one single match based yeah. on like the, the scheduling. So I can see this. And with how close the league is, um, it's going to be a wild, wild end of the season. Yeah, I, I would say that the bottom three teams are pretty much locked already. They'll grab a couple wins, but I'm going to say that they're locked. There's somewhere in there. Like, you know, MBB might go on a hot streak and get up to like eighth or ninth place or like get up or, and get a couple upsets. But I feel like XOB and MBB are definitely bottom three for me. Um, but the rest of the the rest of the bracket is undecided. The standings can really go anywhere, um, and that's what's so exciting about this is that it's like I'm being very uh, aggressive with that bottom three take, but everything else is just a cloudy cloudy fog for me. It's an absolute enigma where everyone's going to end up. Nice. What's your what's y'all's pick for pop off team in the second half? Give, give me one one team. One team, Dan. Give me one team. Mm. Not your team. Any team but your team. <laughs> uh, um, THD. That's mine. THD, yeah, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> a, oh, okay. okay. Oh, wait, Steven's, Steven's not here to say it. Brian Dev, something, something, something. Yep. <laughs> How many times you got to say it, Chase? Oh, well, what's the other one? Uh, Deep Dive. Yeah, I think Deep Dive is going to pop off. I think they just uh, they just got their new top lane coach, Parsa. Uh, to come in. Go. Oh my so, god, yeah, I forgot about that. That might be flying in. They, they hired oh. uh, Dan Lee as their support <laughs> analyst, and Riot Greg is their ADC analyst, so... Okay, okay. Oh the god. the real the real answer should be probably XO, just because TH, uh, THD and Deep Dive still have matches against us, so... <laughs> oh baby, the last match of the season for us is against you, so... Ooh. We'll see where that we'll see where we'll be by then, but it's gonna be yeah. a long ways out. So, yeah, should be exciting. I think I think MVB can only go up. I mean, obviously they have zero wins, so uh, you know if they stay the course, it's unfortunate, but it's not going yeah. down necessarily. But I I think you know they'll be looking up. They just gotta uninstall Final Fantasy, uninstall Lost Ark, play together as a team a little bit more, and then they'll build a synergy. You know, make sure that they have a fire extinguisher in their kitchens. Um, mm -hmm. You know. All, all the all the normal things that you have ready in your household um, to prepare for a BTL match. <laughs> yeah, but I think they'll be looking fine. Anyways, thank you, everyone. That is the last of our questions and the last of our slate here today. Looking forward to a great week five. Wow, we're already at midseason, so turning point for some of the teams. We'll see who really makes a playoff push in the second half of the season. We'll see who stumbles a little bit into the lower bracket. Thank you, Dan's, Coco, Pentamaster, Tactical Gazelle. Any last comments before we say goodbye? I'll take that as a no. 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 <laughs> thank you, BT, or Bubble Tea Time, Bubble Tea League. Yeah, thank you for everybody watching this. Peace out. Good night. See you next week. Bye.